When designing a database, the designer is usually not interested in all function dependencies. This can be very many. Usually the designer is interested only in a representative set of function dependencies that together imply all other functional dependencies. So we will now look at this concept of implication of function dependencies. If you have a function dependency A uniquely determines B and B uniquely determines C, then these two together imply that we also have a function dependency A uniquely determines C. Let's have a look at an example. In this courses table, the course number uniquely determines the instructor name. And the instructor name uniquely determines the phone number. This is these two functional dependencies. And they together imply that the course number uniquely determines the phone number. So it suffices to specify these two function dependencies and this third function dependency automatically follows. Trivial function dependencies like A uniquely determines A always hold. So since they always hold, they are not very interesting. In general, the definition of implication of function dependencies is as follows. We say that a set gamma of function dependencies implies a function dependency alpha uniquely determines beta. So alpha and beta can be sets of attributes. If and only if the following holds, namely every database state that satisfies all of the function dependencies in gamma also has to satisfy the functional dependency alpha uniquely determines beta. So whenever gamma is satisfied, also alpha uniquely determines beta is satisfied. And then we say that gamma implies alpha uniquely determines beta. As a designer of databases, we are usually only interested in a representative set of function dependencies. So we want a small set of function dependencies that implies all other functional dependencies that hold. So now let's have a look how we can determine whether a function dependency is implied given a set of function dependencies gamma. So we'll look into algorithms that allow us to check whether a function dependency is implied. One way to check whether a function dependency is implied are the Armstrong axioms. There are three Armstrong axioms for function dependencies. The first is reflexivity. If beta is a subset of the set of attributes alpha, then we always have that alpha uniquely determines beta. So beta, again, is a subset of the left-hand side. And clearly, if you have some attributes on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, you have a subset. Then, of course, the left uniquely determines the right. Then we have augmentation. Augmentation allows us to add attributes to the left and the right-hand side of an existing function dependency. So if we have a function dependency alpha uniquely determines beta, then we can add a set of attributes gamma to the left and to the right. So it's important to note that we add the same set gamma to the left and the right. Of course, gamma uniquely determines gamma. So if we add gamma on the left and on the right, then all the attributes that we added on the right are uniquely determined by the left. So this is again a valid functional dependency. Then we have transitivity, that's what we've already seen on the last slide. If we have alpha uniquely determines beta, and we have beta uniquely determines gamma, then we may conclude that alpha uniquely determines gamma. Let's have a look at an example. So let's say that we have three functional dependencies given. We have books with an ISBN number, a title, and a publisher, 
and we have uh, authors of these books and we have an attribute number which tells us whether this is the first, the second or the third author. And let's say that we also have a publisher URL. So this is basically the website of the publisher. Okay, we have these three functional dependencies. The ISBN uniquely determines the title and the publisher of the book. The ISBN together with the number give us the name of the author. The publisher uniquely determines the publisher URL. And now we should use the Armstrong axioms to show that these three functional dependencies imply that the ISBN number uniquely determines the publisher URL. Okay, we can do so as follows. First, we can derive that the title and the publisher together uniquely determine the publisher. This is the reflexivity. The right hand side is a subset of the left hand side. So this functional dependency follows by reflexivity. Next, we may conclude that the ISBN number uniquely determines the publisher. We can do this by using transitivity, using the function dependency one and the function dependency four. The right hand side of the function dependency one is title publisher. The left hand side of four is title publisher. So indeed we can use transitivity to conclude that the ISBN number uniquely determines the publisher. And finally, we may conclude that the ISBN number uniquely determines the publisher URL. Again, by using transitivity, this time we are using transitivity with the functional dependencies five and three. Five says that the ISBN number uniquely determines the publisher. Three says that the publisher uniquely determines the publisher URL. So indeed by transitivity, we may conclude that the ISBN uniquely determines the publisher URL. The use of the Armstrong axioms can sometimes be complicated. A simpler way to check whether a functional dependency is implied by a set of functional dependencies F is to use covers. We first compute the cover of the left hand side, and then we check whether the right hand side is a subset of this cover. So of course we need to know what is a cover. A cover of a set of attributes alpha with respect to a set of functional dependencies F is the set of all the attributes that are uniquely determined by alpha. So formally, this is the set of all attributes A such that F implies alpha uniquely determines A. So this definition is of course nice, but it does not help us to compute the cover. This is actually quite simple. If we want to compute the cover of a set of attributes gamma with respect to a set of functional dependencies F, then we do this as follows. We start with X being equal to gamma, and then we repeat the second step until we cannot add anything to X anymore. The second step, we look at the functional dependencies in F, so we pick a functional dependency alpha uniquely determines beta and F. We check whether the left hand side of this functional dependency is a subset of X. And if so, then we add the right hand side of this functional dependency to X. The idea is that if all of the attributes in the left hand side of the functional dependency are already uniquely determined, so they are a subset of X, then also the right hand side of this function dependency, all the attributes beta, must also be uniquely determined, so we can add them to x. And we keep repeating this until we cannot add anything anymore to x. And finally, when x is stable, then x is the cover of our attributes gamma with respect to the set of function dependencies f. And we denote this cover by writing gamma with subscript f and superscript plus. Now our algorithm to check whether a functional dependency is implied by a set of functional dependencies f is simply 
to compute the cover of the left hand side and check whether the right hand side is a subset of this cover. Let's have a look at the same example that we've before solved using the Armstrong axioms. So we want to show that these three functional dependencies imply that the ISBN number uniquely determines the published URL. But this time we are not using the Armstrong axioms, but we are using the cover computation. So we start by computing the cover of the left hand side. We compute the cover of ISBN. The first step is that we start with X being the set that just consists of the left hand side, ISBN. Now we are looking what function dependency is applicable to this set. So what function dependency has a left hand side contained in the set? At the moment there's only one and that's our function dependency one. The left hand side is contained in this set. So we can apply this function dependency and we add the right hand side, so we add the title and the publisher to our set X. So now X consists of the ISBN, title and publisher. Next we're looking again what function dependency is contained in this set X, what left hand side is contained in the set X. Now we're having the publisher here and the left hand side of the third function dependency is a subset of the set X. So the third function dependency is now applicable and we add the right hand side of the third function dependency to X. So we've applied the first and the third function dependency. The second one is not applicable because the attribute NO is not among the set X. So we cannot apply any function dependency anymore. So our set X is stable. So we conclude that the cover of ISBN is the set consisting of the attributes ISBN, title, publisher, and publisher URL. So now we may conclude that the ISBN uniquely determines the title, it uniquely determines the publisher, it uniquely determines the publisher URL. So this is one of the conclusions that we may draw. The ISBN uniquely determines the publisher URL. So let's practice the computation of covers in the online system. Here's our first task. We have a number of function dependencies and we are asked to compute the cover of BG. So clearly B and G will be in the cover. Let's see what else is there. From B we get C. So C will be there. From C we get B and D. So D will be there. From C we get also D and G. D we have already, G we have already. C, we have C and D, so we get F. Okay, now let's look slowly through. This is not applicable because we don't have E. C, D, the F we have already. D, G we have already. B we have. B, D we have. C, G we have. C, we have. The A we don't have, but this is also not applicable because the E is not there. Okay, so we have checked all functional dependencies. We have applied all that are applicable. We cannot add anything anymore. So let's check. And indeed, our solution is correct.